start us off, um, we're going to be demoing uh, the beta version of our webhooks. And you can find the documentation for this at developers.miro.com under the experimental section for webhooks. Um, here you'll find all of the details for um, the functionality, some use cases, and the event workflow. So to just give a quick high-level overview, um, there is an API endpoint that you'll use to subscribe to webhooks for Miro, and that is the Create Webhook Subscription API. Um, upon sending a request to that endpoint, Miro will send back a challenge with a value, and the endpoint that you use to receive events at um, will need to reply to that request with the same challenge in its response. Um, on success, Miro will then return uh, details about the subscription, so whether or not it's been successfully enabled or not. You can see over here on the left-hand side, we have a few different endpoints for managing the subscriptions, um, including you know, create, delete, update, retrieve. This is the main kind of points to point out. And hey there to whoever's joining. Thanks for joining. We're Hi. just uh, going over the introduction page here for webhooks. Sure. It's, um, it's quite straightforward. We have a few different endpoints for managing the subscription portion of actually uh, enabling or disabling Miro webhooks. And that's outlined here in our reference docs. Alex will go through an example in just a bit, um, but I'm just sharing some, some high level guidance. We also have a guide that we've created um, for how to set up a test endpoint for webhooks. If you've never used webhooks before, or if you don't have a server of your own, uh, you can easily create one with Pipedream. There's a lot of similar services out there, but this guide goes through um, how to use Pipedream to set up a test endpoint where you can receive mirror webhooks. Um, yeah, that's basically it. You can find uh, the announcement for webhooks in our change log and a few details there. But basically all you'll need to get started is the introduction documentation here and the actual documentation for creating a webhook subscription here. And let me pull up my postman. So here's an example of um, a request to create a webhook subscription. Um, so you can see it's on our V2 experimental endpoint and I'm hitting the board subscriptions endpoint. Um, I already enabled this, but I'll go ahead and just disable it to show you um, how this works. But there's three parameters, status, which is enable or disable for the subscription, a board ID, um, for me, that's this board right here, and there's a callback URL, so this is your endpoint that you want to receive Miro webhook payloads at. Um, and so if I go ahead and hit send, oh, I need a new access token. So I'll quickly grab one of those. If you've never done this before, to get an access token, you can go to your developer team. If you already have an app, you can select one of those. I'm just going to create a new one. This can be anything. To board read and board write. I'm just going to install this and get an OAuth token. There's my access token. Back to Postman. Put in a new token here. And we'll make this request. So we can see we got a 201 response letting us know that this subscription was successfully disabled. Um, but I'm going to enable it so that we can actually show you guys. And this is where I'm listening for webhooks in Pipedream. Um, if you've never used Pipedream, you can check out that guide that I shared earlier. But um, we can see here at 1738, I got this request um, with this challenge. And my endpoint here returned the challenge back, which is why it was successful and I got the 201. So now I'll show you guys, um, if we go to a board and we create a new sticky note, call this sticky note two or three. Now if I go back to Pipedream, we should see another entry. And I do, um, I can see here, if I go to the event, that the type was an update, 
and it tells me which board it came from. I can see the details of the sticky note. Um, I can see all of the different uh, details, but I'm specifically interested here in confirming that it's the one I created, which it was. Um, yeah, so it's pretty simple. Um, we support all the different shapes and, and whatnot. Um, I believe we support frames as well. So you can create a frame here. And it will support things. all the same types that are supported on the API. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Um, yeah, go back here. You can see some new events just coming in. Yep, this was the creation of the frame. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. I also, I really recommend uh, like Pipedream if you want to be able to see things like really easily in a browser UI. It also show you the headers, so you can see like the Miro verification token here, so that you can check that um, this notification indeed came from Miro. Um, there's also a section in our docs about how to verify that. Um, we give a sample in Python, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, here, where you can um, basically uh, take that token and do some fun stuff in here to to yeah compare them basically um, you yeah. just need to take your client secret take the body of the webhook and then just apply the hmac algorithm to compute this signature and then just check that the signature in the header is the same that you computed and if it's the same it means that it came from uh, uh from us perfect perfect yeah um yeah anything else to add alex i'm trying to think uh, I think like, yeah, you, you describe the flow, like maybe we can just uh, like give ideas how this can be used. Yeah, yeah, I uh, guess the webhooks, I mean. that's a good point. Um, I feel like a, a great use case for webhooks would be, well, if you've ever run into like rate limit issues on Miro, um, this is a great way to reduce the number of requests that you have to make to Miro. Um, so instead of like long pulling a board every so often to see if anything's changed, now you can set up a webhook and a server to just listen for those changes and track those deltas rather than, you know, calling Miro specifically to get that information and compare versus, you know, calls you made in the past. That's definitely like I would say a primary use case. Um, and this will also be useful for like two-way sync integrations where you might have um, you know, items on a Miro board, and let's say that you've integrated your Miro board with something like Jira or um, like Google Sheets or something external to Miro, and you wanna be notified anytime something changes so that it updates in that other third-party system. Um, webhooks are a great way to leverage that. So you know, anytime you have the content for something that changes, you would get a webhook, and then your Google Sheets would know to update the content in Google Sheets, for instance. Um, so yeah, I mean, Google has webhooks too, and Miro has webhooks, so pretty seamless way to have uh, integration that works across Miro and some other source. That's another, um, I think, will be a really popular use case. And yeah, there's a lot of different things you could do with webhooks. Um, I'm excited to see what people do, honestly. You know, as we mentioned, this is an early beta, so we'll be continuing to take feedback and, and iterate on it um, and, you know, yeah, create the best version of webhooks possible. There is one tricky part that I would uh, like to dive deep into. Uh, so because right now we create these subscriptions per user per board, so we use the regular user token, right? The application should use the user token uh before creating a subscription it's checked that the user has access to the board in the same way as like when we want to retrieve items from the board or modify them or whatever and the tricky part is that if the user loses access to the board the subscription will be disabled on our side and we will send a webhook about this event to the endpoint basically webhooks is just like an optimized way to view if the content of the board uh, has changed. Right, and if, like the, original, if the user loses success, yeah. like then exactly cannot anymore uh, allow 
them to view the content. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I think that that's pretty much a wrap on, on this demo. Um, yeah, hopefully you can check out the docs and play around with it a bit. Um, and yeah, if you want guidance on setting up uh, what I've set up here, you can find that um, in this guide.